So in this question, we have an RC series circuit, which means that we have a resistor connected in series with a capacitor. And we have drawn a scenario in which there is a switch. And when that switch is closed, so for example, if we close the switch from A to S, then that creates the circuit and the potential difference supplied by the battery is going to start to charge up the capacitor. And one thing we're going to be doing in the question is solving for the maximum amount of charge that will appear on that capacitor. But first we need to calculate the so-called time constant. And the time constant appears in this equation right here. This equation gives us the amount of charge on the capacitor as a function of time. And the time constant within this equation appears right there. It is the resistance times the capacitance. So for part A of the question, we're going to find the time constant symbolized by tau. And we do that by multiplying, again, the resistance by the capacitance. Now, both of those values of resistance and capacitance are given in the problem, but they're given in non-standard units, so we have to be a little bit careful. For example, the resistance is given in mega ohms. So we're going to have to convert that into ohms by multiplying by 10 to the power of 6. So mega is 10 to the power of 6. That creates ohms. And then the time, excuse me, the capacitance is given in microfarads. So we have to multiply the value by 10 to the negative 6 to get it into the standard unit of farads. So you would then just multiply those values together and you would get 2.52 seconds as the value of the time constant. So that is the correct answer to part A of the question. Now, again, in part B, we need to figure out the maximum charge that will appear on the capacitor during charging. So we can examine the equation that governs the amount of charge on the capacitor as a function of time. Now, in order for us to maximally charge the capacitor, we have to wait a certain period of time, a relatively long period of time if you want to get the maximum charge on the capacitor. So in essence, to get the maximum charge, we wait for a very long time in order for the capacitor to get charged up. So we're going to let the time approach infinity, which is a mathematical way of saying we're going to wait a very long time. Now, if we look at this exponential term right here, we have E raised to the negative T over R times C. Now, from our knowledge of mathematics, anything with a negative exponent can actually be rewritten in terms of a positive exponent by reciprocating it. So we could rewrite that exponential term as follows. Now, as time approaches infinity, then this little fraction right here, this t over rc, if we let t go to infinity, that little fraction goes to infinity. So now we have 1 over e to the power of infinity. Now, e is a number that's approximately equal to 3. So if you multiply 3 by itself an infinite number of times, you're going to get infinity. So we have 1 divided by infinity, which of course approaches 0. We probably know that from our calculus knowledge. So long story short, if we're going to let time approach infinity, then that exponential term becomes 0. So now we have capacitance times the potential difference provided by the battery, and then multiplied by 1 minus 0. But of course, in the parentheses, that just simplifies to a 1. So that would be how we calculate the maximum amount of charge. We're going to go ahead and plug in the capacitance in its standard unit form, and then the potential difference provided by the battery was 12 volts. So let's plug in. And when we do that, we're going to get 2.16 times 10 to the negative 5. The standard unit of charge is coulombs. So that would be the correct answer. Some homework systems perhaps may want you to convert that into microcoulombs. So we can do that conversion as well. We perhaps know that one microcoulomb is 10 to the negative sixth coulombs. And we've arranged the conversion in that fashion so that the coulombs are aligned diagonally. They would therefore divide and become one. They cancel, in essence. And so when you compute that, you end up with 21.6 microcoulombs. So that is the correct answer for the maximum amount of charge that that capacitor can store in this situation. There is one more part to the question which asks us in part C, how long does it take for the charge to build up to 16 microcoulombs? So 16 microcoulombs is less than the maximum amount of charge. We have to calculate how much time that's going to take us. Now, we can go ahead and plug in the 16 microcoulombs. Indeed, it was 16. And we're going to plug that in for the little charge Q there. So that's 16 microcoulombs. Over here, capacitance times the potential difference, we just calculated that. Go back 
and see what we did earlier. Right here, we multiplied capacitance and the potential difference and got 21.6 microcoulombs. So we can fill that in for the C times E value, the whole thing, 21.6 microcoulombs. And now we have 1 minus E to the negative time over. Now remember, RC was the time constant. So we calculated that earlier as well. That was the 2.52 seconds. So we're going to plug that in. Okay, so now it is a matter of solving for the time t. And to do that, we're going to divide both sides by the 21.6 microcoulombs. And doing so cancels the 21.6 on the left side, or excuse me, on the right side. On the left side, we have 0.741 approximately. And that is equal to that other term. Now we're going to just continue solving for t. We can subtract 1 from both sides. So on the left side, that gives us negative 0.259. And then over here, these ones cancel. So now we have a negative in front of our exponential term. We can divide both sides by negative 1. That would cancel the negative on each side. So we have this now. And now to solve for time, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Now doing that, of course, would bring this exponent down into the front of the ln of e. Of course, the ln of e is 1, so this fraction times 1 is still just the fraction, so we can kind of get rid of the ln of e. And then finally, we will multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2.52. And doing so cancels the 2.52, and then the negative times the negative becomes a positive. So in essence, we're left with positive t. And when we compute the left-hand side, we get about 3.40 seconds. So we would have to close that switch and then wait about 3.4 seconds for the capacitor to charge up to a 16 microcoulomb charge. And that is the correct answer to part C of the question.